Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I've been promising this for a long time now, and I know that some of you that are still out there and waiting have been waiting to find out what the update is on the VW Beetle project. And so this big mess behind me is the Beetle. At least it's the chassis of the Beetle. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just clean off um, everything that's on here and then I will go over all the things I've completed so far what I have yet to do and my plans for this uh, project in the near future all right I'm not exactly sure where to begin so I guess I'll just kinda start from the beginning because I know I haven't documented hardly any of this work so far. Or, to be truthful, I've recorded, I filmed a whole lot of this stuff. But I just don't feel like I know enough about what I'm doing to be able to make videos about what I'm doing. But feel free to chime in if you see anything in on what I'm about to show you that you think needs to be addressed. But for the most part, I've learned a ton about these vehicles, and especially this model year, and I'll go over some of that. So I think the first thing I did was I took off the front beam and I rebuilt everything on the front beam. So that included taking off the steering box. I didn't um, do I didn't take the steering box apart. I took off the cover, repacked it with grease, made sure there wasn't a whole I, I eliminated the play the end play um, in, in the shaft and I basically just repacked it with grease. I believe we've talked about this before. Um, this was the old school style um, lowering system that used to be done back in the 70s I guess um, and it's a little sketchy to uh, put it lightly and um, right now I have it all set up to hopefully have this beetle riding at its uh, normal ride height. Um, and the, when I f first bought it, this thing was slammed down to the ground with this thing, and you could really feel it when you drove it. So the control arms have all been rebuilt with new polyurethane bushings. I installed new grease zerks in every location, new ball joints all around with grease zerks in them. Um, new wheel bearings. Sorry if you're hearing a clicking noise. Hold on a second. Let's see. New, there are new wheel bearings in here. And I, I kept the old shocks because they actually seemed to be fine. They're easy enough to replace. So if I find that I need to replace them, after I put everything together, I can do that with the body on. It's not that big of a deal. I bought all new tie rods and tie rod ends. The steering dampener was fine, so I kept it. And yeah, I think that pretty much does it for the front end, the front beam. I did buy dust shields for the disc brakes but they didn't fit but I really I honestly believe I can modify them to to fit this so I will have dust shields on here eventually but that's probably going to be a a way way down the road project so you so you may notice I have a whole bunch of tie rod ends like a big pile of them over here and one thing I found out the hard way was that the 1968 model year of the VW Beetle halfway through the model year they changed from 10 millimeter studs to 12 millimeter studs and most parts supply companies don't understand or don't know that history and so when I ordered tie rod ends for a 1968 Beetle they sent me 12 millimeter tie rod ends and then they proceeded to refuse to refund me on them. So 
So I ended up with a whole bunch of extra tie rod ends. I had to buy the 10 millimeter ones that actually um, fit in the steering knuckles and the control arms. Um, so that was uh, one thing that I got to learn about the 1968 Beetle is that halfway through the model year they arbitrarily decided to change the uh, diameter of their tie rod end studs. After I finished the front suspension I decided to stick with the suspension theme and so I started working on the rear and it's a lot more simpler. Um, you got the torsion springs that run through this rear um, tube. Uh, it's a torsion bar, it's not a spring. And um, and then you have the spring plate right here. And let's see if I can. And that thing is a beast to get off. And it's even harder to get back on. So I was able to do it. I had to create a little jig with some threaded rod to compress to you know twist the torsion bar the the big thing is that the torsion bar is like a it's splined right and this um, depending on how you clock the splines on this spring plate depends the you know that determines the ride height of the rear and so I luckily I had done enough research I read enough that I knew to mark mark on the spline the location that the spring plate was sitting before I removed everything. Again, I hung on to the shocks because they seem to be fine and, and also they'll be easy to replace if they end up not being fine after everything's back together. New wheel bearings, I rebuilt the brake system. Um, I didn't, the, the shoes were brand new already so the previous owner had already uh, put in brand new shoes and to be honest with you, I can't even remember if I put new cylinders in. I think the cylinders were new too, so that wasn't needed. Um, and the brake drums looked great, so I kept those the way they are. I put all new polyurethane bushings. The bump stops on here, and there's uh, bushings inside that access plate for the, the torsion bar. Um, and they're all polyurethane. I did pull, before I did that rebuild, I did pull the transmission and I cleaned it up and, and painted it and I put in new gaskets and I also rebuilt um, these uh, axle tube flanges, whatever you want to call them, and I resealed the flanges so I wouldn't have any leaks at this point. Um, I did rebuild, I put in all new bushings inside the axle tubes. And as you can see, I've uh, replaced some of the missing rubber, uh, the rubber that was missing on the vehicle previously. So this little transmission boot here, and then there's this little protective boot for the throttle and the uh, clutch cables. Now before I did any of this work, I did cut out the old floor pans just so I could have access to everything. And, um, you know, I just wanted to get them out of the way because they were just a rusty mess and I didn't want to hurt myself on them or anything like that. So, um, I finally did get around, obviously, as you can see, to putting in the new floor pans. And, you know, that's kind of a first for me. Um, before I could do that, this portion of, this this is like a cross member, right? And this portion of the cross member is called the Napoleon's hat, I guess because it resembles Napoleon's hat. And these corners on both sides were completely blown out, um, especially right in here. This, I guess water gets in and then it just sits in here and uh, it rusts it away. So I ended up um, basically just rebuilding it. I bent some steel around the corner. I cut out the rotted parts and I bent some steel and made a new corner and welded it all up. And, you know, considering I'm an amateur, um, I thought I did a pretty good job. So both sides had to be rebuilt and so I did them and then I had to clean off the there's a well there's a flange for spot welding all the way around the um, whole perimeter where the pan goes in and the, the floor pan just sets in it and I did have to trim my floor pans a little bit but uh, they were pretty well made and these are the heavy gauge like the 18 gauge steel pans and so they're really heavy duty and um, and so I just drilled the holes all the way around the edge of the 
the edge of the uh, floor pans and proceeded to weld them in, spot weld them. And then I did buy a couple of tubes of the, the good 3M seam sealer and I sealed all the seams and um, like I said the pans I think turned out really well considering I've never done anything like this before I was really pleased with the outcome and my only the only thing that I really am concerned about is the placement of these jack points because these were separate and I had to weld them in place and I had nothing to reference so I did have I do have a friend with a super beetle and I had him measure his jack points from the rear of his pans and that's where I put them but I'm not sure if that's correct and I don't know if it really matters either but um, that's where mine are and that's where they're gonna live and I maybe once I get the body on it if it gets in the way or whatever you know it's not there's not too many uh, spots where I've welded it so I can grind it off and redo it if I need to so the last thing I've done so far is I've uh, been redoing the brakes. So I got a brand new master cylinder, all new hard brake lines. The soft lines were already new when I got the vehicle, so I put the new or I put the old soft lines back on because they're fine. And so now I just have to run the rear brakes, and that kind of brings us to where we are right now. Um, so what you see is how far I've gotten and you know it's an understatement to say that it's taken a long time to get here I'm guilty of getting distracted and losing interest for a period of time and then picking that interest back up since I've started this project I've rebuilt my parents basement completely remodeled it I've gotten into 3D printing as you can you know as you have seen with all of my review videos and have gotten this partnership with Banggood and that has that takes up a lot of my time as well. I've been rebuilding my shop and reorganizing it and it's kind of a mess because all the Beatles stuff is on my workbench right there. I just got a lot of irons in the fire. And the original reason I was rebuilding this is for my wife, and it still is for my wife, but my wife used to work in town. She worked less than a mile away from our home, and I th we thought this would be a great little commuter vehicle. It would be fun to go back and forth to work. Well, she got transferred to a city about 30 miles away, and I don't think this Beetle, I don't want to put those types of miles on this Beetle, and so the priority of this project has kind of fallen to the wayside. On top of that, if you remember, I, we had a tornado at the beginning of 2021, and it picked up the body and threw it around my front yard. And that did discourage me quite a bit. Um, I wasn't wanting to do a whole lot of body work, and now it looks like I'm going to be doing a whole lot more body work than what I had planned. And so I'm a little reluctant. I'm procrastinating, I guess. But I'm not giving up. And that's, I think that's the biggest takeaway from all of this. I'm not giving up. There's still a game plan. There's not much left to finish the chassis. I've got, I've got the, uh, the shift linkage has to be reinstalled. The um, parking brake levers. And the, um, what do you call those parts? The, um, the, heat, the heater controls, right? And I need, I, I kept the old heater control tubes that come out of these little ports here that control the little flaps for the heater. And they're in this mess somewhere because I did, you know, new ones didn't come with the new floor pans. So I have to install the shifter. I got to finish running the rear brakes. I have to rebuild my shift fork back here. Um, it's soaking right now in the parts cleaner over there. I have to rebuild my pedal cluster. So that's right here. And um, I got a rebuild kit for that. And then I just need to run my throttle cable. I need to run my throttle cable clutch cable is still there and I think that's it 
The only reason the engine is not currently installed is because the shift fork hasn't been rebuilt yet. Once that gets done, I'll install the engine and maybe free up a little bit of space in my shop. Because right now it's just sitting on a motorcycle stand over here. And um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do. The engine runs great. Uh, I'm, I don't want to start taking it apart and repaint things and everything because it runs fine. So I don't know. I haven't decided. I, I might just clean it and see how it looks cleaned up. And get the sawdust off of it. I might replace some of these hoses with new ones um, be just because these old ones are dirty and oily but I'm trying to have the philosophy of if it ain't broke don't fix it I had some questions about the oil cooler ports here you see how there's a lot of these big gaps in the oil cooler ports I'm not sure they're supposed to be there. I've tried rearranging these tins and they don't seem to nest together very well. I assume since it's on the exhaust side of the oil cooler that it really doesn't matter where that air goes because if you under here it just kind of spits out the bottom. So it's not like this air needs to be directed over the cylinder heads or anything. So I think it's okay, but hopefully somebody watching this will let me know. So as you can see, some progress has been made, but obviously it's not as much progress as I would have liked. Um, at this point, I would have liked to have been already working on the body and going through all of those growing pains. But life happens and priorities change, and unfortunately, this project has fallen to the back burner just a little bit. The idea going forward is maybe I will do quarterly or semi-annual updates on this, or if I make any drastic progress in a short period of time, I'll recap that progress. Um, but for the meantime, uh, especially while we're in the holiday season, I've got some other things i got to take care of. And I should be ready to start back up on this project at the beginning of the year. So I hope you'll continue to follow along this project as it progresses and maybe stick around for some of the woodworking and 3D printing things that I do as well. If you haven't seen them yet, I'll go ahead and put a playlist of the rest of the videos pertaining to this beetle project right here um, on the screen. And uh, feel free to uh, check those out. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release new content. Thanks again everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.